Hello and welcome to Cash In on IT, your go-to podcast for all things information technology at MCC. My name is Art Brown, I'm the Dean of IT at MCC, and I'm thrilled to guide you on this exciting journey through the dynamic world of IT. Together we'll explore the latest trends, innovations, and success stories within our department, giving you an insider's look at what makes our IT community thrive. Throughout our various episodes, we'll shine spotlights on incredible talent of our faculty, dedication of our staff, and some of the ambitious spirits of our students. I welcome you to sit back, relax, listen to our seasoned IT professionals and aspiring students as we begin this journey on our podcast. Welcome to another episode of Cash In on IT. Today I'm happy to have three esteemed guests with us from Bellevue University, Patrick Nealon, uh, Jeremy Crump, and Doug Roush. Thank you guys for being here with us today. Glad we got you. So we're happy to have you because we want to share, um, just to give you some context, this podcast is really targeted towards our MCC students and the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. And we just want to share with them, um, highlight partnerships we have within the community, um, specifically with students, share with them what they can do in and outside of Metro, so we're happy to have you guys share what's going on at Bellevue and you know what we can do to get our students considering this pathway. So um, before we get too deep into everything, I kind of want to share with the audience, usually when we have guests, we have our guests kind of give a bio about your background and experiences. So we'll do a round robin. Patrick, I'm going to start with you. If you just want to maybe share um, how you got into IT, your pathway, and you know what your title is today, and then We'll go a little bit deeper as we come back around. Yeah. So. Yep. Yep. Sounds good, Art. So yep. um, this, uh, I'm going to share some dates, mm -hmm. and it's, it's going to really That's show right. my gray That's and my okay. beard. Okay. So right. um, I started, I graduated from college in the, in the 90s. So okay. I'm, I'm not going to give you the exact date, but <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> it was so in the right. 90s. Gotcha. And um, I, I was getting ready to graduate, and mm -hmm. it was still you know the dot-com boom, mm -hmm. and everything was exploding. And I was, I was looking for careers, and, and I wish I had something great to share about how I got into IT. But it was really either I take job A or mm -hmm. I take job B, and job B was in IT, and it paid about ten thousand dollars more. And <laughs> I was, reason, I reason. had, I had my girlfriend at the time, mm -hmm. who is now my wife. I was like, well, this is a great job. I, you know, this is a great salary to start out with, and so that's how I got into IT. Perfect. Um, and but since then, I started as a software engineer, okay. and did that for many years. Really enjoyed it, and then I started moving into the other fields. Got into database administration, some mm -hmm. infrastructure then moved into leadership um, along the way, ended up getting my master's degree. Um, and then um, f after I finished my master's degree, it was about, I'm trying to think about 14 years ago, I started teaching part-time at Bellevue okay. and really enjoyed it. And since then I've been, about three years ago, I transitioned to full-time and um, been, been at it ever since. But thank most you. of the, most of my career is probably, I would say half is engineering and half in leadership. Gotcha, so. thank you. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us. So. Yep. Jeremy, yes. good to have you again. Same, Why don't you same, share same. with the audience kind of your, your pathway to your current role, if you don't mind. Yeah, so um, started with Bellevue about five years ago. Okay. Um, got my first um, start in higher ed back about eight years ago, um, working over at Iowa Western Community College. Gotcha. Transitioned over to Bellevue in my current role as a relationship manager, while assist with students with um, transferring over from uh, Metro Community College over to Bellevue to pursue their four-year degrees and then on after that. So not specifically in IT, but I kind of worked the relationship management role between Bellevue and uh, Metro Community College. Okay, thank yeah. you much. All right, and then Doug, yourself. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I think actually kind of similar to Patrick and you really look at a lot of folks been in IT a while, you tend to migrate. Yes. Job to yeah. job as things occur, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. I actually started in software. I okay. was a programmer okay. um, and uh, was in the military. So gotcha. I was in the Air Force for 25 years gotcha. and, and started doing software and then really moved to what we would consider just base level communications. It was telephones mm -hmm. and radios gotcha. and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, as networks became important, I moved into networks. Yep. And then as uh, they started getting attacked, I started doing cyber, gotcha. you know, and so really working both on the technical side as well as what we call the governance, risk, and compliance mm -hmm. aspect uh, for the military. Gotcha. And so did that through a number of a number of different projects, and then uh, retired from there. Started at uh, at Bellevue. Gotcha. And uh, been actually started as an adjunct, and then I've been full time at Bellevue since about 2015. Okay. And, and teaching the cybersecurity program there. So. All right. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. So Jeremy, thanks again for having you. Let's uh, let's take a little deeper dive into your role as uh, relationship manager at Bellevue University. Can you share with the audience what that looks like? So as a relationship manager for Bellevue University, I work with Metro Community College students on transferring their associate degree over to a bachelor's degree at Bellevue. Okay. There's a few, three or four set process that we go through um, in that transfer process. The main thing I do when I first begin is kind of meet with the students, teach them about Bellevue, get to know them a little bit, learn their aspirations and things like that. Take a, take a view at their credits that they've already earned. Okay. Let them know how those credits transfer over. So that's usually our first process, when gotcha. we, the first step in our process when we meet with students. Um, outside of that, 
We'll then kind of go over degrees, um, kind of some of their credits and things like that, what their degree, what their uh, time at Bellevue will look like. Okay. Um, and that's kind of that first step of me as a relationship manager when I'm going in meeting with students at Metro that are looking to transfer over. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Can you, um, so in that maybe through this five step process, is there anything mm -hmm. students can do to best prepare for that first meeting with you or those series of meetings? Of course, yeah. So the first thing I always recommend students do is bring over their official unofficial transcripts. Okay. So that way, whenever they bring that um, those unofficial transcripts to our first meeting, we can really narrow down what their picture looks like over at Bellevue. Um, so the first thing we always do, look at those transcripts, narrow down exactly how many classes they'll have to take over at Bellevue, things like that. So anytime I meet with students, that's usually the first op The first objective is to take a look at those unofficial transcripts that they've earned over here at Metro. Gotcha. What about, students are always asking, can uh, we jump ahead? Um, so mm -hmm. I get admitted. Um, let, let's, how long does the admission process take? So they've, you've done transcript reviews. Um, students have started their program of study. Right. How, how long does that process typically take? So it, that's that's a good question, Art. It mm -hmm. can take anywhere from a couple weeks, anywhere from a couple weeks to a few months. Mm -hmm. um, we always tell students start earlier rather than later because of that. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, dealing with transcripts and things like that, those have to be ordered and sent over to us over at Bellevue. So the process can take anywhere from a couple weeks to a few months. It just all depends on the student and where they are kind of gotcha. in their um, in time the process. At Metro, yep. Right. So if I, let's say, for example, I'm a student here at Metro graduating um, November, fall quarter, mm -hmm. ideally they would have engaged you before that. But let's say if we've got a student graduating spring of next year, when would you recommend they engage you or what, would it, are you the first point of engagement? Or I'll be the first point of engagement, yes. Okay. Um, so I tell students that first, that first term, mm -hmm. I'd work with you that first term. Okay. If it's your last term, I'll still be able to work with you. Okay. Um, obviously with deadlines and things like that, there's some, there's gonna be, you're gonna be advantageous to get in there earlier rather than later right. to make sure we hit all those deadlines. Mm -hmm. But there's ne it's never too late or too early to kind of start talking with us over at Bellevue. So. Okay, sounds good. And the big question we always get to scholarships, can you elaborate like what opportunities to help fund your education? Yeah, so there's a couple, there's a couple big ones here um, that are specific to Metro. Mm -hmm. First one is going to be our transfer grant. So we offer a $500 transfer grant to students okay. that are interested in coming over from uh, Metro to Bellevue. Okay. Um, all you have to do is be a transfer student to qualify for that. We also offer a PTK or Phi Theta Kappa scholarship, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be another $500 grant for students if there are members of PTK. Um, we, do we do offer in-house scholarships as well at Bellevue. Gotcha. I always tell students apply because you never know if you'll be able to get those scholarships or not. So um, a lot of opportunities for students to get money towards their education. Okay, sounds great, sounds great. Uh, let me ask you this, what, are there any, let's say I'm an incoming Metro student or mm -hmm. any student, um, are there maybe some top initiatives that Bellevue has in the works? Or you know, if I'm a prospective student, what would excite me about wanting to come to Bellevue at this point? I think the biggest thing, we accept all, all college level credits. Okay. Um, so anytime I talk with students, I think that's the biggest, um, biggest perk that we offer mm -hmm. our um, community college students is that we will accept all of your college credits as long as they are 100 or college level credits or higher. Gotcha. Um, so I think that's what makes us a little different mm -hmm. um, compared to some of our other institutions around, this, around the state and things like that, is that we will accept 100% of their credits and utilize them in some way which in return allows students to complete their degree at a little faster of a rate, gotcha. a little bit lesser of a cost as well, uh, because we do accept all those credits. Sounds good, so really generally no fairly liberal admission policy. It is, Minimal, yeah. if any, loss of credit is what I'm hearing, which is good for our students. It is, it is. And I know we do send quite a few students over to Bellevue, which is yeah. very good to hear. Uh, let's see, um, anything else on just the general admission process? Anything, if you could share, Again, if I'm that student sitting, listening to this, and Bellevue's like on my short list. Yep. It, I, yeah. I'd encourage you guys to, to reach out. Um, we, I work with the Transfer Center here at Metro a lot. So if you guys know Mary Padilla in the Transfer Center, right. she'll be able to reach out to me or you guys can reach out personally. But reach out, obviously, set up a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, that's the first step. I think with a lot of students, they, they miss that first step. Just set the meeting up gotcha. so we can come and talk with us, and then we can kind of help you out with these. Gotcha. So we will yeah. put your contact info on the video. Students will have a direct awesome. line awesome. of connection to you. So. Thank you, we'll thank probably come back to you. So Bert. Patrick, I'm gonna jump to you. So um, can you likewise share with the audience your official title with the university and let's talk about the pathway that leads into the pathway you support. Yeah, so our, my official title is I'm the program director or assistant, assistant professor program director for the CIS program. Gotcha. So okay. um, in that role, I kind of guide the curriculum, make sure that it's aligned to where industry's going gotcha. and, and making sure that we're always having cutting edge technology to okay. support you know, job placement. That's right. one of the things that we're always looking at at Bellevue right. University. Gotcha. Um, but with that said, um, Doug is another program director. We're active involved in a lot of the different sort of what I'll call computing degrees, right? Yeah. So Bellevue University not only has CIS, mm -hmm. 
We also have data science. We have what we call BSIT, which is our basic network program. We have computer science, traditional mm -hmm. computer science. We have um, two programs that are, are really unique in nature, but they're also in very high demand. Um, they're kind of full stack. You know, you hear a lot about right. these boot camps. Well, right. this is not a boot camp, but it's a degree that's right. aligned to s sort of the same outcomes. And so we have a software development program that's a full stack Java with a little PHP involved. And then we have a web development degree program mm -hmm. and that's full stack JavaScript. Mm -hmm. And then finally, what did I leave? Oh, we have a project management. Project, um, management. project management. I think that's everything, right? Oh, cyber. I'm going to let you. That's not yeah, Doug will talk about cyber. Yeah. cyber. <laughs> <laughs> that, that Doug's the expert. Cyber. Oh, gotcha. we have business analytics as gotcha. well. Gotcha. Okay. So, yep. so if you could, uh, I'm just curious, Patrick, what, if you're comfortable sharing, what is there any of those programs that you think are the most popular for incoming students? Or? Yeah, um, well, obviously Doug has, Doug cyber is, for Doug's sure. the man yeah, for, the yeah. for the biggest one cyber right. is. But I think the other ones, Obviously, it's going to be any program that's really, um, it's going to lead direct placement into mm -hmm. high quality, high paying jobs, gotcha. right? I mean, those are, right. those are where they are. And obviously, it's going to have to be student interest as well. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, a lot of those then are, our software development is, is really growing. Right. Um, our BSIT program, mm -hmm. our networking program is really growing. Gotcha. Um, we just introduced the computer science program mm -hmm. and, and that's growing as well. So all of our programs are, are solid or right. growing. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so uh, it, we're lucky in IT, there's lots of, lots of jobs. So, there are. Yeah. So what, um, related to that, um, what do you all do? I, I know you have the similar challenges that we do. You mentioned making sure you're providing relevant education. What steps do you all take to kind of make sure that curriculum is relevant for students coming in? Yeah, so I think there's, a, there's really two big things that we do is um, a lot of, um, like Doug, myself, a lot of the full-time professors have been in industry for a long right. time, right? Mm -hmm. um, we do have academic experience, but a lot of our experiences mm -hmm. come from industry. And so we can bring some of the background and, and really try to make the curriculum um, tailored to applying what you're learning. You right. know what I mean? So if you're learning about some, let's just say a balanced tree, you're not just talking about the theoretical aspects mm -hmm. of a balanced tree, but you're talking about how to use it, right? right? Gotcha. And so that's a big part of what we do. Um, the other thing is that we, um, we integrate, um, I don't know what we call them, Doug, or communities where we bring in a lot of the expertise. Our advisor so, yeah, boards. Yeah, right. advisor right. boards. Yes, yep. thank you, Doug. Thank our you. advisor <laughs> boards. So a lot of our programs have advisor boards gotcha. where we'll bring in. In fact, we have, I think, software development has one coming up soon where we bring industry leaders from out, you know, from the mm -hmm. metro area and then actually s some from outside. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, talk about right. where the industry is going and Same. we make yeah. sure that we kind of align to that. So. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Similar to what we're doing. So yep. Mm -hmm. to verify. Uh, what would you say, um, you know, for that? prospective student here at MCC or any incoming student, um, how would you, like maybe what are some essential skills you think every, let's say specifically in the software development, CS pathways, what are some essential skills you think those students need to have? Yeah, so I think, um, I think, in, and this applies not only Metro students, but any student, is really when you're, when you're approaching software development, software engineering, um, I always tell students, a lot of them come from oh, it's you know uh, where you just sort of memorize things, yes. right? You you read a history book or you read an English book or a literature book, and software engineering is not like that. You, right. you just can't read mm -hmm. about code. You actually have to do it. I always tell mm -hmm. the students like a skill. Mm -hmm. You know, if I ask students what their favorite hobby is, and a lot of times it's like oh, I like to play basketball or yeah. video games mm -hmm. or whatever. And I'm like, software engineering is just like that. You just can't read about how to play yes. basketball. You do have it, to play basketball. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing that I think. And my son is actually taking a software course this fall and I think that was one of the things he struggled with is because he's mm -hmm. so used to the traditional read, memorize, you know, write that I think it was a, a change. So I think the biggest thing that um, I always advise students on is is treat it like a course where you're gonna, uh, almost like a, a skill-based course, you know gotcha. what I mean? Where right. you, you have to sit down and you have to practice and then showing them, um, teaching them how you go about, if you're developing software, how do you go about just approaching the problem, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and how do you debug statements and how you right. kind of, when you're coding it, how do you how do you approach it? Just like you would mm -hmm. when you try to approach yep. a three point shot, yep. you just can't go up and throw, <laughs> throw yep. the ball, you Systematic. have to do it, yeah. Yep. yeah. There's a certain process yep. that you yep. wanna do. And so I think that's the biggest thing. Because otherwise if, if students don't get that, they get overwhelmed right away yeah. and they just, they just they just quit, you know what I mean? Because it, it can be kind of intimidating and it can be difficult. I know I had a, I had just had a class Wednesday and it's the introduction to programming and I had some of the students that still hadn't got over that, mm -hmm. how to approach the problem and I could tell that they were 
frustrated and we had to sit down with them and say, this right. is how you want to do it. Right. You want to you wanna write code, you want to be patient, you want to mm -hmm. put in debug statements, and you want to just look at it that way. Gotcha. So, yeah. And that would be my biggest advice for Very us helpful. Too. So related to that, I would imagine with your advisory boards, similar to what I think we hear is, um, you know, obviously the essential technical skills, critical thinking, mm -hmm. creative yep. problem solving. How much do you all factor in uh, interpersonal skill development into your coursework? I'm just curious. Yeah, so um, a lot, and I can't speak for the software development right. ones, but mm -hmm. I know um, one of our web ones, that's mm -hmm. another one popular, that's a mm -hmm. full stack JavaScript mm -hmm. program. Um, they have, they they use sort of a scrum-based approach okay. when they're developing. They all have capstones, right? right? And during that capstone, they work as a team gotcha. to develop a working software at the end, <laughs> right? And so they'll mm -hmm. have stand-ups and the professor will be there and any any of the staff or any of our <laughs> faculty right. are invited to attend as well gotcha. and they'll do a demo as well. So I think cool. we try to integrate yeah. as much as possible. Um, it's just like any any program, there's just so much content, Can't, right? That is, you, yeah. you have to balance. Right. And so we try to get, we sprinkle a little bit along the gotcha. way. So. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so definitely my trusty cards here. Let's see. How do you see, you know, maybe the next three to five years, um, let's say software development, um, networking? Well, your area of your focus software development mm -hmm. here. You're teaching some of the computer science yep. classes as well, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you see the field evolving? What, you know, maybe for that prospective student, what should I be on the lookout for? Um, I mean, you know, we know AI. Yeah, so just gonna say, so yeah. gonna say AI. I know, but <laughs> it's just any, yeah. yeah, kind of carrying on with that last yeah. comment about essential skills. Yep. And if I'm looking for that next greatest thing, feel free to elaborate. On yeah, that. yeah. So you, it's interesting that you mentioned AI. Um, it, it's it's not. I wouldn't. I I don't want to overblow, it, but I mean, it's a game changer, it is, right? It I is. mean, it's a real game changer. And I think, um, in my opinion what we're going to have to do as software developers is, is understand how to use it correctly right. and how to use it so that um, in college, as you're, as you're becoming a software engineer, I see so many students utilizing AI. Yeah. And, and I think it's, mm -hmm. we, we have to come to the place yes. as, an, as Metro, right. Bellevue, mm -hmm. whatever your academic institution is, it's there. It is. And you have to face this as a reality. Right. And, I, and I, Doug and myself were actually just talking about this the other day. Mm -hmm. um, Use it as a tool. Use yes. it as a learning mechanism, right. not as something that you have to push away. Oh, don't let right. students do that. And right. so we're, we're trying to be creative in different ways that we can use that in our curriculum of Good. Bellevue. Good. Um, you know, encouraging students, you know, uh, write, you know, use, you know, your AI, whether it's Copilot or ChatGPT, right. have them write a, a mm -hmm. program that does mm -hmm. this, right? right. And right. then, ha you know, compare that and change mm -hmm. it or modify yes. it. Or, you know, have one that you've already done and have another one that, you know, AI generates and yes. compare the differences. And, right. and so we're trying to, and I think like anything that's, it came so fast, AI Indeed. came so fast that, you know, we're a little behind the curve on how to do it, but we will get there. And we I will, think yeah. things like this experimenting mm -hmm. will get at all I, the institutions. I will concur. There. Yeah, we're in the same boat. I think it's, uh, it's encouraging to me your progressive attitude. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, a lot of uh, folks in academia feel Punitive, the punitive approach mm -hmm. is the right approach. Mm -hmm. I respectfully disagree. I don't yeah, think I that. So I'm encouraged to hear that. I'm hoping our students will be encouraged mm -hmm. to hear that as well too. So let's see. Um, you talked about hands-on learning and applied learning experiences. Um, maybe elaborate on partnerships, Patrick, if you can. So um, what, uh, to what extent, you know, you have your advisory boards, but mm -hmm. um, you mentioned in your intro, um, career readiness and career placement. Can you talk about that experience? Yeah, so um, we try, as I mentioned, we try to um, build our curriculum to those advisory boards and where industry is going so that we have students that are job ready, right? right. Well, um, we will focus on, you know, using the balance tree example. Right. We will talk about that, but we'll talk about how it applies. And I hopefully those, well, I know they will, those skills will be directly mm -hmm. applicable to getting a job, right? right? right. Um, and I think that's where we focus. And so we have a handshake, we have right. other ways that we um, try to encourage web job fairs, or you try to encourage students to get involved. I know a lot of in like software development, web and in cyber, mm -hmm. they also have, um, you know, um, they use Slack and other things. Yes. And a lot of students will make connections mm -hmm. through those. So right. um, a good majority of our students are already in the field, gotcha. right? They're yeah. coming back for a, right. a second degree or right. they got into the field and they never finished their mm -hmm. degree. They got a certification mm -hmm. or a boot camp and mm -hmm. now they're they're finishing at Bellevue. And so having students come in, they, mm -hmm. they can, 
be a mentor, or they can get their foot in the door. And the other advice that, and, and then they do that through these yes. different channels. The other advice I always give students is, um, and this applies to anybody, is, is get involved in a lot of the meetups. You right. know what I mean? That are right. occurring, even if you don't know anybody mm -hmm. or you don't know the topic, at least show up. You right. know what I mean? And right. ask them to volunteer. And, right. and, and that's how you make connections. That's true. So. And, that, and that's the critical thing, the networking mm -hmm. and connections it may is. be underestimated by students. It is. It's a, yes. it's a lot. It's, it means a lot. Definitely. So. Uh, and let me see, I was going to ask you one other thing related. Uh, so we talked about uh, job placement, using the tools like Handshake, anything else that, so again, I'm that incoming student, um, I'm looking forward to some great curriculum at Bellevue. Yep. <laughs> when I get through, um, you have a, I'm assuming you all have a career, I know you do a career services or career experiences mm -hmm. team, yep. they provide additional support in those, in the job placement mm -hmm. arena yep. too. Good, yep. gotcha, gotcha, okay. Thank you, Patrick. Yep. Doug, I want to jump to you here. So if you yep. can, maybe share with the audience your official role at the university. and Sure, yeah. yeah. So I mean, similar to Patrick, uh, I'm associate professor and yep. program director for the cybersecurity program. So gotcha. we have both a bachelor's and a master's in cybersecurity. Gotcha. So in that role, um, you know, manage the faculty, gotcha. make sure the curriculum's where it needs to be, gotcha. you know, uh, and, then, and then work with the students and then teach classes. Uh, kind of the other role is um, also the director of our Center for Cybersecurity Education. So Bellevue, much the same it's as actually Bell Metropolitan, yes. is um, a center for academic excellence in cybersecurity, uh, you know, as uh, designated by the NSA yes. and, and Homeland Security and, and CISA. And so in that role, uh, really making sure that our program stays uh, aligned right. with the types of knowledge, skills, tasks, and, and things that uh, really employers need, yes. the government needs, yes. and we need to make sure that our cybersecurity professionals um, are equipped well. Yeah, for sure. So um, can you maybe take a little bit deeper dive, Doug? So like curriculum, cyber-wise, yeah. um, I'm familiar, but our audience may not be CAE, and how does your, maybe to the extent you feel comfortable diving, what can a student expect coming from Metro or anyone? Like, what are they going to experience curriculum-wise? You know, what, actually, what's really, really, uh, I think, neat about that is is the relationship we've got built between yes. our program we do. Yes. And, and your IT programs, yes. and especially your cybersecurity program. Sure. Um, and so I think at, at one level, very much like we were talking previously, we have an advisory board right. to bring in that industry experience. Yes. We have our both our full-time and our adjunct faculty come out of industry, are still in industry, yes. so it's rolling those in. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, um, we have a number of, and, and essentially what's been done is the uh, federal government has looked at and said for, basically categorized all the jobs that are out there yeah. in cybersecurity because they need them for the federal workforce. Yes. They need them for the Department of Defense. And so have said, hey, for these jobs, what are the knowledge, skills, abilities, and tasks yes. that are required right. to be proficient at that? Right. Um, we kind of break those down uh, into a number of things called knowledge units. Right. And those knowledge units, we have certain ones we need to select, certain ones we have to do mandatory-wise, some we specialize in. Mm -hmm. And then the curriculum is built up against that Good. and then it's peer reviewed and we make sure that it's it's aligned what's really neat from your students coming over into our program is a lot of those KU's are similar KU's right and so a lot of the material it's almost like you're uh, kind of hitting it at one level right. and then we dive that next deeper. that yes. next level down so we really do see when we get students from from MCC there's that they get the kickstart. Yes. They really kind of start running a little bit better because they have seen the material. Right. They have started working through it. Right. In addition to the gen eds, you know, um, there are you know some of the courses that are comparable and yes. you know are accepted from that standpoint. So right. again, it makes that path to the degree a, a little bit shorter. Sure. Um, and so, but it really does. And what we kind of done now on top of that is we really try to work a lot of scenario based education right. and training into it and the idea being if you are in this role right this mm -hmm. is what you're going to do and so therefore let's kind of run the course that way so you know for our example we've got a, a penetration testing course so that's essentially where we teach individuals use those same techniques that you see threat actors use right. break into systems figure out how you did that and then recommend to the organization that's and so you're going to do a penetration test against a fake organization that we've got out there, right? Yeah. Um, another area individuals are excited in is intrusion response. It's okay. those people working in a security operations center. It's mm -hmm. those individuals when the alarms start going off, 
you know, they're the ones that try to make sure you don't get the notice that said, hey, your credit card information has been stolen again, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so we have a couple of courses that really walk through. They, they're a, a security analyst at a bank, right? Right, And go through a scenario from that standpoint. Gotcha. And so, um, you know, students come from Metro, really got that good background right. to kind of jump to that into that level. And it, I think it ends up, it's going to seem a lot more familiar right. than it's going to seem like a different program or right. a different... Um, a different school, really, yeah, and so sure. I think that's a, that's a good match. That helps very that's helpful. Good. Yeah, and I know you shared that with me before, so it it to me is reassuring, and hopefully for our students listening, that they're not going to come in blind if they've started here with MCC. They're well prepared and can jump right into the next. Absolutely, level. Yeah. you know, and if, and if they're ones that they've decided, hey, I'm going to take a few years off. Right. Still you know, I'm doing wor working in a job yes. and coming back in. That blends in beautifully sure. as well. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. Very cool. So good to hear. I'm glad you're sharing that. Um, so Doug, can you, um, related to this, can you like discuss any recent trends or um, maybe red flag things that should be on the radar for any security professional or aspiring professional? You know, some of this stuff ends up being <laughs> kind of almost anti-intuitive or I think sometimes we don't want to listen to it perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, the three biggest things we always hear coming from employers is need to have technical skills, mm -hmm. which no surprise right. there. I think that's where everyone kind of figures they go yes. to school to learn the technical yeah. skills, right? But it's communication mm -hmm. skills. Yep. Can you write? Yes. Can you talk? Yep. You know, um, which I, I think that's got a little bit more. Oh, I don't need to do that. I can just type out a text message. Like, well, sometimes it takes a bit more than that, yes, right? Yeah. And so I think really refocusing a little bit on what does business communication look like. Right. And the other thing is, and this one really seems anti-intuitive, is do you understand the business? Hmm. And so you have, you can do cybersecurity, right. but I'll tell you, cybersecurity looks different in a bank than it looks at a water treatment plant, yes. mm. that it looks at someone doing retail or FinTech. And so what we really see from employers is if that individual understands how do I apply cybersecurity to this business, right? right? That's what's going to make them money. And so that's kind of why we try to wrap some of the scenario training into it a little bit right. and really get you that overview of, you're not just learning how to be a cybersecurity professional, you're going to be a cybersecurity professional on finance right. or in retail or in this. doesn't mean you can't move around, right. right? But we always tell students, you know, there's no organization. I work for federal government. We had more money than anybody, right? right, right. We couldn't fix everything. Yeah. So this aspect of risk is so important. Right. And so really being able to explain to that, to your boss, to the board, right. that says, this is important and we need to put some resources against this. This isn't as important and it can wait, right? right? To how do you spread that money around, spread those resources around mm -hmm. a little bit? And so we really, we really try to work that into into the scenarios, right. into the courses, to make that student really more, um, give him better advice, yeah, really absolutely. is what it comes down to. Absolutely. One of the things that, that we're doing, and I know that your staff is working on as well, is a competency-based training. Yes, yes. And the idea of a competency is, it's not just saying, I can use, we have a tool called Wireshark, for right. example, which right. you use to look at network traffic. Mm -hmm. And it's not just saying, Oh, I can use Wireshark. It's, I can use Wireshark to analyze the network traffic to ensure that nothing bad is, you know, mm -hmm. and it puts it into a context right. and really defines. And so not only does that help scope, one of the things we have found, uh, we're bad on both ends of the spectrum. As graduates, we aren't always great about describing what it is we can do. Right. As an employer, we're really bad about describing what it is we need. Right. And so that's why you kind of get this mismatch between graduates and, yes. and employers. Right. And so part of the goal of these competencies is how do we better align so that graduates can tell the story of, right. here's what I can do. Right. And employers can say, here's what I need. Right. Right? And then we kind of make that, that yeah. marriage. Totally makes sense. Yeah. So curious, uh, related to that, um, competencies, your personal philosophy on um, the question I get from a lot of students, and I'm sure you probably do too, how important are industry certs and income, you know, they are a carryover from competencies, any thoughts on that? Well, I, I always tell my students, I said the number one answer 
you should always give in security, no matter what the question is. Well, that depends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? The ordinance yeah. that you go ahead, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so it really is. All that depends. Um, certs are important, yes. potentially. Right. And so the mistake we see individuals making is, boy, I'm just going to go ahead and get as many certs as I can, as fast as I can. Mm -hmm. If that's your thing, perfect, right? right? You, you, you enjoy studying, you enjoy going ahead and taking tests, you enjoy paying these fees, yes. you know, the renewal fees. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not gonna, I mean, education's a great thing, right. right? What I tend to tell students is, well, as you start going through a program, take a look and start looking at some of those job descriptions, right. those positions that you're going to go into. Right. See what they require for a cert, okay? Right. We see certs being required um, predominantly, uh, you know, it, it's not the, a perfect example, but certainly federal job positions. Right. Oddly enough, uh, federal positions have just removed the requirement for a bachelor's degree. Interesting. But yeah. certs are still in place, right? Mm -hmm. Because of how they can align things. But federal government, uh, finance companies, because if you're dealing with uh, credit card data, mm -hmm. there are certain things you need to be certified in to make sure. A lot of it comes down to uh, legal compliance. Right. Right. All right. And so if you're going to go into one of those jobs mm -hmm. that says, yeah, you need to have this cert, okay, let's focus on that. Right. right. I'll tell you when to go ahead and, you know, when, what, do it after this course. This right. is a good target to get into. That's good to do. Um, Something you say, I'm really interested in this, and you'll go and look, and it's like they don't look for a cert, right. mm -hmm. or they'll say this or this or that or that. What mm -hmm. you're trying to do is make yourself as a graduate the most desirable package right. that you can. Right. right? We always tell students, this, you know, diploma is great, but all a diploma does is now distinguish you from everybody who doesn't have a diploma. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. right. Now, what are you going to do to distinguish yourself from everybody that does right. have that diploma? Exactly. Cert may be it right. if that job you're going into requires it. Right. If that job doesn't require it, they're not going to look at it. Right. Right. And so, do your homework. Gotcha. That's what that comes yeah. into. So yeah. I'm going to go yeah. kind of down a rabbit hole on this yeah. too. Yeah. So related, your philosophy. Um, so I'm, I'm an aspiring cyber professional. Uh, finished my two-year degree at Metro. Transfer to Bellevue. Work on my bachelor's degree. How important do you think pursuing that master's degree is out of the gate, or what are your thoughts on that? I'm just curious. Well, it depends. Yeah, it depends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Standard, yes. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, if you take a look at what is the difference in our bachelor's and master's, you can kind of get an indication there, right? Right, right? So when we take a look at cybersecurity, we tend to bucket it into, into two areas of focus. Right. One is that I'm more hands-on, technical, mm -hmm. working with the bits and bytes. I'm on the keyboard, right? right? The other piece we call this governance, risk, and compliance, or GRC, right? right? And it is, it's more of the business cybersecurity. How do I make sure I'm compliant with the rules required? Right. How do I make sure I can write the policies an organization needs? How do I make sure that uh, a governance, uh, the, the risk posture right. is, is what's needed, right. okay? If you take a look at our undergraduate, it's about two-thirds that technical side right. and one-third the GRC. Right. If you look at the masters, it's a flip of that, yep. gotcha. right? And it's because as a graduate at a bachelor's level or even a, the associate's degree, right, right. you're going to go into those entry-level positions. You're working on a keyboard. You're working in a security operations center. Mm -hmm. You're doing a lot of that technical stuff, right. okay? Again, if you like education, never bad, but masters isn't going to help you a whole lot okay. there, okay. right? And so it's when you want to start moving into more of that management position. I no longer want to be the guy on the keyboard. Right. I want to manage right. the guys on the keyboard, the guys right. and gals on yes. the keyboard, yeah. right? And so as you're moving up into that, or if you're really wanting to look more at how do I manage that business of cybersecurity, right. that's where that becomes more important. Good. The other thing I, I will generally encourage students to is, it's good to have a break between a bachelor's and a master's. Good. One, you're burnt out. Yes. You know, it's good to take a little bit of a break there. But if you can get a little bit of experience, it makes what you're learning as a master so much more applicable. Right. That you can say, you know, I'll talk to students that, you know, and maybe they'll only had six months break, but they've done something else. Right. So, oh, I understand what this is because that's how this applies yes. to this. Because it really is, as a bachelor's, what we're doing is we're giving you a bunch of information. We're telling you, get good at that, right. memorize that, right. right? It's that blocking and tackling. Yeah. As a graduate student, we're kind of pulling those reins off a little bit, and we're saying, here are some topics, right? right? How does this apply? 
and you've really got to learn, you know, kind of um, be in charge of your own education a little bit more right. in terms of that analysis. We look more yeah. for the knowledge at the lower right. and the analysis, analysis at the yeah. higher. And to have that outside job that you can tie to and say, that's how that applies. Right. It's going to give you a better experience. Gotcha. Invaluable. So when our audience is listening, they'll listen to this. So <laughs> <laughs> great insight. So let's see. Uh, let's see. So uh, Doug, what do you... In, uh, Doug and uh, Patrick, what do you both do to kind of stay current? I think we talked about it, but you know, you and Cyber, Patrick, you, you know, you mentioned your prior experiences. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious with the audience if you could share. You know, uh, one of the <coughs> things that, I guess, okay, two things really, I guess, and one thing is read. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. I really encourage students all the time. You need a reading, a professional reading list. Right. Something that says these are the, you know, corporate blogs. Um, you know, well-written publications, whatever that relate to my area of expertise. Right. You know, there are a lot of professional journals, mm -hmm. professional, read those. Gotcha. You'll hear what's going on. That's, mm -hmm. that's number one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, and it's again, something that uh, really students should do is build a home lab, gotcha. right? You know, I'm sure Patrick probably programs a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a lab set up where it's like, okay, we're going to check networking, we're going to test that, we're going to build some things, we're going to break some things, gotcha. and then we're going to fix some things. Gotcha. And you really do learn from that. And so what's the latest technology that comes out? You know, oh, that looks interesting. Um, I think one of the really neat things about the IT world, uh, especially when you start looking at software and cybersecurity, you know, there's, there's so much open source that's free. Right. And so it really is enterprise grade. It's the same kinds of things you would be doing in industry, mm -hmm. but you could load it on your system at home and get familiar with yes. it. And, and it's not going to cost you a thing other than time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And exactly. so that's really important. Again, because uh, when you go to that interview, you can not only explain what is it you know, you can explain how you learn to learn. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to get you hired. Invaluable. Yeah. Invaluable. Yeah, Patrick. Yeah, I think and all of, all oh, of what man. Doug yeah. said is perfect, yeah. right? Um, one of the things um, maybe to add to it a little bit is if you're new to the field, mm -hmm. right? If you're just starting IT, it can be overwhelming, yes. right? You're just like, oh my God, all this stuff. And it, it, it's interesting. We were, Doug was talking about this. We were talking about this the other day. I mean, we've been in the mm -hmm. field for so long. Just how much of it exploded? Just yes. everywhere. I mean, you used to have a pretty good understanding of everything yeah. in IT. Now you're just like, I said, I can't. You know what I mean? And yes. so, it being just stepping mm -hmm. into it new, mm -hmm. it, it can be overwhelming. So, um, one of the things I always encourage, and I was just talking to students about that um, yesterday, is find like there's a bunch of ones. IBM's really good at this, right? They have they have a YouTube channel where they just have introduction mm -hmm. to different IT topics, right. whether it's virtualization or whether it's, you know, what is cloud computing or, you know, what is AI mm -hmm. and how is it driven? And that just gives you a whole understanding and, and they're really easy to consume. Mm -hmm. And so if you're new to IT, I highly encourage you to subscribe. IBM's a good yeah. one again, but right. any, all the vendors right. have them and they just give you a well-rounded right. understanding. And, um, one thing you want to do is, especially with like these YouTube t um, or any podcast, they're easy to consume, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. so anything that's easy to consume, you can make it a habit, Absolutely. right? And yeah. so a lot of times when I'm driving, you know, to Bellevue to campus, I'll listen to them. You know yeah. what I mean? And, yeah. and it just kind of, if it's easy to do, it becomes a habit. So Absolutely. that's one of the things I, I encourage. And then um, for students that really kind of know where they want to be mm -hmm. and what they want to do, and where they want to focus in IT, um, a lot of those I always encourage, join those communities. Gotcha. Get involved with the communities, build your network. Right. That's another thing. And then like what Doug says, you know, you have to have a lab. You have right. to you have to put fingers on keyboards right. and you have to, you know, spend some time just right. learning new things, trying right. things out. So that would be my Good. biggest advice. Gotcha. So similar question for both of you. Um, the Bellevue University experience is it fair to say non-traditional students? Is that a fair statement that when coming from Metro, kind of our students are already used to that, so not gonna be a huge culture shock for them. Mm -hmm. But um, if I'm that prospective student listening, what can you all share in, the, in regards to club experiences or like social experiences they might experience in the IT realm if they come to build? Yeah, so um, there, well, actually I'll let you speak to that, Doug. I think you have your cyber. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so one of the things I really try to do is and I, and I think you hit already, Patrick, with, with the networking. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. so what can you do from that perspective? Yeah. One of the things we do on the, on the cybersecurity side is we have a, um, um, it's a capture the flag right. 
competition, yes. right? So Capture the Flag is a, um, it's a competition where you have challenges, you know, in, in certain areas. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's open source intelligence. It is um, log analysis. It is reverse engineering. Mm -hmm. It is web exploitation. Mm -hmm. It is password cracking. It's mm -hmm. all those skills mm -hmm. that you're going to use if you're doing this job. Right. And so we're uh, we participate in, in in several. We participate in National Cyber League. That is a fall and spring league okay. uh, that students can join, and we compete against colleges, uh, universities across the U.S. Okay. Um, we've been doing that for I think probably five or six years now, mm -hmm. and uh, we've ranked in the top ten nationally prior, Very right? Cool. In, in terms of this, and it's that's a really neat thing because students really talk about how it kind of puts a little bit extra practice mm -hmm. on, on on what you're doing, right? And and they make good bonds with their with their teammates. Right. Uh, another opportunity is. Um, we'll have come up, I just checked it, it starts in four days every year is the Code Breaker Challenge. This mm -hmm. is a, a, a competition put out by the NSA mm -hmm. where they basically put out a bunch of computer stuff and you have to figure out what it does. Right. It's reverse engineering, so mm -hmm. it's a forensics challenge. Okay. And it's the type of thing you would do if you were analyzing malware or working a criminal investigation, okay. that type of thing. Okay. The really neat part about that is um, those are all things, and people will get together to do them, but they can be all done online. Very cool. Okay, cool. and so if, if someone's in a different space, or man, I got to work during that time they normally meet, th there's an opportunity there. Very cool. And so those are things that are really, really kind of neat that, that are available. Gotcha. So my question related to that, do you, is there any prerequisite coursework before students mm -hmm. can get involved with those? No, no, we really make it, I mean, um, if they ask, yep. what do I need to know? It's like, well, I mean, this one's a bit more advanced than right. this one. Maybe start here. Gotcha. But our goal is not to um, start with an expert. Our right. goal is to start with someone and get their toes wet. Right. Make it exciting. And so, yeah, I mean, the, I, I push pretty hard with, with the students. Like, no, if you don't know anything, you're the one that we want. Gotcha. <laughs> right? And then how do, you, how do we then excite you about this, right. get you diving into it, getting you to do that self-learning? And it's, it's been amazing. Very cool. One of our um, you know top players that we've had, he was a firefighter in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. You know, came out and boy, six months he was writing Python code to crack passwords. It was just because it just interested him that heavy. Right. And you just see that story over yeah. and over again. Very cool. Very cool. So kind of wrap it up, you guys. Uh, Jeremy, I'm going to look at you. Last question. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm that perspective MCC student. Talk about maybe campus life a little bit if you can. Um, Dorms, no dorms, and it kind of carrying yeah. on what Doug mentioned, like campus activities that students might expect at building. Yeah, very traditional campus. Right. Um, so we do offer dorms for students, um, a couple different dorm options from traditional dorms to apartment style dorms, mm -hmm. um, athletics, clubs and orgs. So when you come to campus at Bellevue, um, you're gonna get that very traditional feel. Um, if you're a commuter student and you're looking more for that commuter side as well, we do very well with the commuter students as well. Um, but campus wise, um, thriving campus, cafeteria for students, dorms, things like that, activities. So we always welcome students to come in for a tour. Gotcha. Um, we do tours um, at any availability that students have. We can do a tour for them um, and be able to get them to get the feel of campus and kind of be able to see what it's like. Great, sounds okay. great. Gentlemen, thank you all for being here today. Are there any closing comments or, again, for that audience that's Bellevue's on my list, uh, any last comments you want to share with the audience on that? Um, just they can always stop by, right? Okay. When they're on, like Jeremy said yeah. on the tour, you know, just stop by yeah. and um, you know schedule some time, and, and we can go over all the different degrees. I know we've done that a couple of different times yeah. when yes. when Metro's on campus, and yes. and we can talk through them, right? Perfect. And I know um, most students have graduated the two year degree or close to it, so they kind of have some general idea. Yeah. But we can also provide just general advice. Perfect. You know what I mean on degree programs. So. Thank you, thank you, mm -hmm. Jeremy. Any I, I, exactly what Patrick <laughs> said, you know, um, reach out. That's the biggest thing. Reach out, schedule a campus tour um, so you can get to know campus and then we'd be able to talk to you guys and be gotcha. able to kind of narrow down whatever degree it is or whatever pathway they want to go towards. Perfect. And Doug, any party? No, I, I, I just check us out. I mean, gotcha. I've never seen two students have the exact same needs. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's really through that one on one. We'll walk you around. We'll chat with you. Perfect. We'll see what's going on. And students generally have some unique question. Right experience, expectation, and we can talk to that. Great. Um, it's something you can't do through a 
podcast like this. That's right? true, very true. Yeah. Yep. So we will make sure we'll put everyone's contact information so students will be able to have a point of contact. And mm -hmm. thank you both, thank all three of you, uh, and I'd be remiss, so I'm side-eyeing my producer here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so to kind of take the pressure off of you guys, we kind of do like a speed round if there's any questions you want to ask of me uh, regarding our program or anything, you guys feel free, this is your time too, so. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're turning the table. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I wasn't ready for that. Um, so I guess you know one thing is we get a lot of students from Metro. Right. I mean Doug and the uh, um, cyber program sure. are very much aligned. Um, you know what kind of programs? If you graduate with you know a degree mm -hmm. from Metro, yes. If you if you is it a lot of you know software development? If it is, is it aligned to sort of what I talked about? Computer science, it is. web, yes. software development. Yes. So I, yeah, I've I've looked at your programs. I'm familiar. Okay. So we we have five concentration areas: uh, uh, administrative technology, computer programming, and web app development. Okay. Uh, database data science, IT infrastructure, which is set networking and security, mm -hmm. and then finally front end web development. And then we also have uh, through transfer degree pathways, so computer science, MIS, and a cyber transfer to the state institution. So, okay. so I think everything you both have discussed, we have programs that do map clearly yeah, to they do, Yeah, they're, yes. they're very much aligned. So. Yeah, very cool. Good. good question. Great question. Yep. Okay. Anything um, mine would be, <laughs> yeah. any IT related events coming up for Metro students? Or uh, yeah, the biggest one is uh, next Thursday we have our IT annual career fair, so we're pretty excited. We've okay. got, uh, last I looked, 37 employers and 160 students registered, so that's, that's pretty awesome big for us, and so we're super awesome. excited about that, that's yeah. Um, probably for fall, that's, we've been really focused on that, so that's the biggest thing in the near future, so. Gotcha. Yep. Perfect. And we, well, I'd be remiss, we have uh, uh, eSports and Ethical Hacking Clubs, and so they're just getting started for the fall term, so we'll be seeing more activities with them as well, too. All right. Yep, good question. Yep, Doug, anything you could pick up, or? You know what, actually, no. I mean, yeah. just, and I, but I think it's a good indication yeah. of yeah. the relationship yeah. we have yes. between, the, between the programs, I think. Yes, you know we have a really good idea right. of what each is doing. We do, we and do. and where uh, where the pipeline kind of fits. Yeah, and, and I should share with the audience. I know you know Doug and I have kind of worked indirectly. Um, Metro Bellevue, we've done uh, Gen Cyber for yep. a few years in the past, and yep. I know uh, Cyber Patriot this summer. Yes. If I'm not recall, mistaken. Yep. So yeah, we have strong relationships, and you know definitely want to continue to build that, and hopefully give our students another option to pursue that four-year education. So awesome. thank you all three so and much. Your time is greatly appreciated. And thanks to our audience. Uh, we'll glad to have you guys, and we'll have you here again in the future. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, all. Right. Thank yep. you guys. Mm -hmm. Yep.